Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back. In this week's lesson, we're gonna do one more example on how to use a web API to extract some uh, data from the web. Um, this time we're gonna play around with uh, doing some image searches, and we'll look at a few different API options. And we'll build an example around uh, searching for images that relate to a keyword and then downloading these images back into our P5.js sketch uh, to do some kind of data manipulation. Uh, we're going to go back to some ideas we explored earlier on in uh, the series. We're going to talk about averaging, except this time we're going to apply this to images. Um, and uh, as we go along, we're also going to explore a few different uh, ways that we can manipulate uh, arrays and objects. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's just dive right into it. Okay, uh, so we're on our uh, node blank sketch here. So we're going to remake this one because just like with the other two examples, uh, when we're dealing with uh, interfacing with web APIs, we want to use Node.js as the proxy, the intermediate to get around some of the limitations of working within uh, the web browser, right? Working within the client, uh, for security reasons, we can't just access any URL on the web that we want, but our server can. Uh, so this is the, the whole reason we took this detour through uh, Node.js. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to just start by uh, remixing the sketch here. And uh, let's call this... Uh, Pexels. Uh, Pexels is going to be the name of the API we're going to use. Um, an example of retrieving. Oops. <clears throat> Pexels API. Okay. And uh, we'll come back to this in a second. So there's a, there's a few different uh, APIs we could turn to if we want to do uh, image searches. So looking, for example, um, doing a search based on some keywords and then getting a list of images back that we can import into our sketch. Um, one of the old older places we can do this is uh, a website called Flickr. Uh, Flickr has a great API uh, if you're interested in it. It has kind of a photo sharing site that's been around for um, quite a while. And uh, the, their API is, is good, um, but the uh, pictures that you get back from, uh, from Flickr, uh, the, not all of them um, will give you the rights to use them in a project, for example. So uh, this, I'm mentioning it as a special mention because this is one source of images you can use. Um, there are many others. Um, Unsplash is another great source of uh, free images that also has an API. So all the images of on, on Unsplash are basically um, like stock photos, uh, except they all have a free uh, free use license to them. Uh, we're not going to use the Unsplash API only because the free version uh, limits you a little bit more in terms of the number of calls you can make to it in a period of time. Um, so instead, we're going to use a website called uh, Pexels. So Pexels is a lot like Unsplash. They're kind of a competitor to them. Uh, and it's a, a repository of uh, stock photos. <clears throat> and you can search you know, for images on this website, and it will give you uh, a bunch of pictures. So here I search for pictures of sunflower. Uh, it will give you a bunch of images that match that keyword. And all of these are free to use. Uh, so these are perfect for our example this week. Um, and conveniently, Pexels, uh, like many sites nowadays, also has an API. So I've already created an account here on Pexels. Um, just like with uh, other examples, you're going to get an API key once you register for it. And uh, then we have some documentation. <clears throat> so the Pexels API, luckily, is, a, is fairly straightforward. Um, it's worth pointing out a couple of things before we get started that are going to be good to keep in mind. So first um, is uh, their guidelines, right? So they provide all of the data for free. Um, they provide you with a few limits. So you can make up to 200 requests per hour with your free account and 20,000 requests per month. Okay, So that's pretty good, um, especially if you're just playing around or creating um, you know, a class project or some examples. Uh, so this is a very permissive API that uh, has a lot of power for free. Um, the only thing that they ask uh, is that you include a link to Pexels whenever you make use of their API. So we'll make sure we follow their guidelines in our example, and I'll show you how to do that once we build our P5 app. 
Okay. So we can see on the left here, there's a, they have a few options, things you can do with their API. You can search for photos. You can also search for videos, but we're going to stick to photos today. Uh, and collections, which collections are these kind of curated um, groups of pictures. Okay. Uh, or they can be like pictures that relate to a specific user, for example. So we're not going to need this. <clears throat> so we're going to be searching for um, for photos. And um, you can see there's like a search function. Uh, there's a URL here. That's the base URL for the API. And then there's some parameters you can provide when you do a search. You can do a query um, based on keywords, or it could be a sentence. Okay? Uh, you can look for different photo orientation, landscape portrait, or square. We'll experiment with that a little bit. Um, the photos coming back, uh, you can you can set here which size, which minimum size you want, but the photos coming back, we'll see have a lot of different size options in uh, the data that comes back uh, and so forth. You can also search by color, which could be interesting, and uh, <clears throat> some, uh, some specific locales here for the pictures. And then uh, the pictures that you get back, if they're, so they have a database of millions of photos. Um, they're going to come uh, in what's called pages. Okay, so the maximum number of pic pictures you can get at one time is going to be 80 on one page. Uh, we're going to stick to just single page search results. But you know, if you had, if you wanted to access, you know, up to, for example, here, this example has 10,000 results, right? Uh, you could specify which page in the search results you want to get to and uh, access, you know, more than 80 photos in total uh, if you wanted to. But we're not going to go that far in this example. Uh, on the right here, we get an example of the data we're going to get back from the API. So the data is going to be in JSON format, which is JavaScript object notation, basically an, a JavaScript object that contains a little bit, a few useful attributes here on the number of results, and then an attribute here, which is an array, right? That <clears throat> um, an array that's going to contain information about uh, all the individual photos that have been found. Okay. So we'll dive into this once we. Um, We'll, we'll dive into this once we figure out how to do the uh, API calls. All right. And then finally, uh, the last other bit that's worth pointing out is the authorization. So authorization for Pexels works a little bit differently than the examples we've done so far. Uh, in the first API example we did, we simply provided our API key whenever we access the API as just another uh, variable as part of the URL. Uh, in the second example we did with Twitter, uh, we used OAuth as a protocol for authentication. This one just shows us another variation of another way of authenticating with an API. Um, it's going to be asking us to provide the API key as part of the, this thing called the authorization header. So I'm also going to show you how to do this in Node.js, and you'll see it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> OK, so we'll leave this documentation open here. And um, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to go and grab my API key. Let me hit back here a couple of times. OK, I'm going to copy and paste the API key because we're going to need that. And um, I'm going to do that first so we don't forget. We're going to go and edit uh, back into Glitch here. We're going to edit our environment variables files and we're going to add a variable called API key. And uh, this <clears throat> value is going to be private. Um, it's only going to be viewable by the people who own the sketch, and we'll be able to refer to it in our code later on. And then back here, we are going to reopen the documentation in case we need to refer to it. All right. So for the first part of this, uh, the, for this first video today, what we're going to do is we are going to build our server side code so that we can do some searches, get some images back into P5. And then once we get that far, um, we are going to uh, take a pause. And then in the second video, we're going to do a little bit more manipulation of the images we get back. Okay. So we're going to follow a similar framework that we did in the first API example we did a couple of weeks back, where we set up a route here on our uh, web server. So we're editing the server.js file. So this is the Node.js server. Just to rejig re your memory here a little bit, we're using a framework called Fastify, which kind of quickly creates a web server on um, using Node. And Fastify has a few different ways. It can serve web pages. It can serve static files, right? So the static files are the ones we put inside this public.html folder, uh, this public folder. And then in 
public right now, we have our index and we have our sketch, right? This is our usual index and this is our sketch. Um, we're going to update here the, well, we'll just comment this out for now actually, because we don't need this <clears throat> at the moment. Um, and what the server allows us to do is we, we can open URLs, right, that are coming from our own server. So this would not be the correct name here. I've called this a new sketch now, so this is now called RTA42 pixels. Okay. But this would be the correct URL. Uh, so we're allowed to open these URLs and we can use load strings, we can use load JSON, and the server is gonna act as kind of the middleman between our P5 sketch and the data API we're trying to access. So we're gonna get rid of this uh, circle for now because we don't need it. And uh, you'll notice that I made changes here and actually the code doesn't update right away. Okay, that's an important little detail. And that's because I turned off uh, refresh app on changes. And you're probably gonna wanna do that as well when you're working with web APIs that will uh, limit the number of API calls you can make per hour. Okay? Uh, if you'll recall in the documentation, we can make up to, um, what was it? <clears throat> uh, 200 requests per hour, okay? So that works out to, uh, you know, just a little over three requests per minute, give or take. Uh, so if we constantly edit our code and um, we're not doing any requests right now, but at some point our code is going to be querying the Pexels API to get some data back. And if we're constantly editing our code and Glitch is just constantly rerunning it the way it normally does, um, that's going to cause a lot of requests to go out to the server and we're going to run out of our 200 per hour very quickly. Whereas um, if we just kind of hit refresh when we're ready to try something out, like so, it's going to rerun the code. We're going to have a bit more control over how often our code is going to reload and down the road, how, how often our requests are going to go back out to the API. Okay. So, you can uncheck this box here, refresh app on changes. Uh, keep in mind, this is a change that is global to Glitch, okay? It's an editor setting that affects, uh, just like your theme, your preferred theme in Glitch, uh, it's gonna affect every other app you open. You can always toggle it on and off as needed. Um, so if you've unchecked that box as you edit other apps on Glitch, uh, it will also be unchecked from until you check it again, okay? So just something that's good to keep in mind. So we're gonna leave that unchecked for today so we don't kind of burn through all of our number of requests we have available to us for the hour. <clears throat> okay, so uh, jumping back into our server here, we're gonna take a similar approach that we did in the first uh, web API that we used, which is we're gonna set up some route on the server. The route is just means it's gonna be a URL that we can open like a path as part of our URL. And um, that route is gonna allow us to provide some code that's going to run every time we open that URL. And that code is simply going to build up an HTTP request, and it's gonna send an HTTP request to the Pexels API server. It's gonna get some data back and it's gonna pass that data back onto our website. Okay. Now, let's have just calling it query, that's a bit generic. Let's just call this route Pexels, because it's going to be using the Pexels API. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to remove these comments for now because they're not going to be relevant. And um, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to delete this. Actually, I'm not going to delete all of it. I'm just going to comment it out for now. And we're going to rebuild this route from scratch. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's define an object that's going to represent the API base URL. Okay. So what I mean by that is the API URL, let's go to the search for photos, is this URL over here, right? So when we try to access this API, <clears throat> this is the URL that we're going to be accessing. So I'm going to copy it from here because for some reason I can't select this. So HTTPS, right, api.pexels.com slash v1 for version one slash search. And then after that, there's going to be a question mark and then any number of parameter value combos, right, separated by the ampersand. So these are the variables that we're going to provide whenever we do our API search. So what we want to grab here is just the first part of this. That's, I'm going to call that the base URL or the API URL. And we're going to create it uh, just like we did last week with this uh, URL object. Now URL is an object that's just part of the of JavaScript. And <clears throat> what it allows us to do 
is that uh, once we have this URL object, we can um, we can manipulate the URL a little bit more easily. Rather than trying to add the parameters at the end by putting the uh, question mark, and then let's say we wanted to do a query looking for you know sunflowers, for example, right? Rather than hard coding that or having to manipulate it that way, uh, we can now use the syntax. We can say API URL dot um, search params. And then we can, this is just simply an array of objects. So we can append to that um, the name of the parameter. Let's say we wanted to add a parameter called query. And then we're going to say put a value sunflower. Okay. And just so we see the effect of what we're doing, we're going to uh, log the result of this. Now, this is an object. This is not a string, right? And the actual link is called the, it's the href property of the URL object. <clears throat> All right, so let's just test this before we go any further. So a couple of refresher as well. When you're working in Node.js on Glitch, your console is not the usual browser console. It's accessible through the logs option here. So I'm going to open my console right there. And then finally, also, if we want to test this URL, uh, we can change the URL here uh, that we are opening in the preview section. And I'm going to put my route here called uh, Pexels. So this is the name of my route. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we're getting an error here, but that's because we're not sending any response just yet. But we can see that the log here is showing us our uh, URL, right? This is our URL being printed in the console. So we can see that uh, search params.append is adding query and sunflower to the end of the URL. Um, now, so going back to the API here, there's a few different parameters we're going to want to provide when we're doing a search for images. The query is going to be the keywords we're looking for, but we might want to add a specific orientation, maybe a color, maybe a number of results. Okay, so it's possible that you know we might provide multiple parameters here, right? When we access this URL, <clears throat> and we may not want to define them um, in the web server per se. Maybe we want to be able to define them in our P5 sketch, but when we're going to be using our proxy route. Okay? So I'm going to show you here a trick that we can do that we're going to say, take you know, any parameters that we're passing. Let's say we're going to have query equals sunflower and um, per page equals 50. Okay, let's say. Let's take any parameters that are being provided and we are going to add them to this uh, search uh, these search params here automatically instead of doing them one at a time like we've done in the first week example. Okay. <clears throat> so the parameters that are provided in through this uh, URL here that are part of the URL, we can access them in Fastify by taking a look at the um, this object. Okay. It's called uh, rec. This is the first parameter of our function over here. And this object has a variable called query. So I'm going to log this so we can see what's in it. I'm going to refresh. Uh, oops, should be console.log, sorry. I'm just going to log it down here so we can see um, what we get. Refresh. OK. So we get an object. And inside of it, we can see we have a parameter called, we have a, a series of key value pairs. Uh, hopefully you can see those. It's kind of a little bit small down here. Uh, we have a, a key of query with a value sunflower, and we have a key of per page with a value 50. Okay, so those are the variables that I passed in the URL over here. Okay. <clears throat> so in JavaScript, um, we can get these um, common these combos here of val key value pairs as an object using the uh, object dot entries command. Okay. So if I do object dot entries instead, this is what we're going to get back. So I'm going to refresh here. Okay. So sorry, it actually refreshed a few times. So now I have an array. Okay. And then inside that array, I have two elements that are also arrays with two values in each of them. Okay. So this is something that we can now iterate over. 
<clears throat> and we're going to use a special syntax we haven't seen before um, to do a kind of a shortcut iterating over things like arrays, or you can also iterate over strings, different types of objects that are iterable. We're going to use the syntax for. Okay? And then instead of counting using an index and all that, um, we are going to use this syntax. So we're going to say for, and here when we're iterating, let me scroll back up here, each element actually has two values in it, right? It has a key and a value. So we're going to say for key comma value of object dot entries rec dot query. And we are going to write a little for loop here that's going to go through <clears throat> essentially all the key value pairs that are inside this, um, this object query. So let's just log them now just so we can see that we have access to them. So now we have key and value. Let's hit refresh. Scroll down. Okay. Every time I hit refresh, it actually runs the code a couple of times. But we can see now we're logging the key followed by the value, right? So we have the key followed by the value. So what this code is doing is it's kind of going over all the different um, parameters, right, and then variables that we provided through the URL, and it's going over systematically all the ones that are provided, yeah, and then we have access to them as two variables over here. So if we wanted to add them to the end of this API URL, uh, we could now simply say API URL dot search params dot append and we're going to append the key and the value. Okay. So that way, we don't have to define ahead of time when, when we're going to call this route, oops, sorry, this route on our web server. It's simply going to essentially put this URL, the first part of the data API, as the base. And then it's going to add to that any number of key values that we provide. <clears throat> All right, so just a different ways, a different way that we can set up our um, Node.js middleman here, kind of the proxy. It just shifts the burden of figuring out which parameters of the API we want to be using. Um, it's going to allow us to define that inside our P5.js sketch instead of defining them inside the server side code. Okay. Both approaches are perfectly fine, but um, this is kind of in the spirit of showing you a different way that we can do things. Okay, <clears throat> so once we have our API URL, um, the other thing we have to do is send a request, right? We're going to send an HTTP request. So we're going to go request. And uh, in the past, right, we did uh, API URL href. That was the URL we were requesting. And then we define a callback function that we would get once the data came back. And in that callback, the body is the thing we're interested in passing on to the callee. And this would typically contain our JSON data that we get back from the API. <clears throat> I'm going to delete this comment. Let's hit refresh. Now, if we do this, we'll get an error. It's going to say, oh, you did not you did not authorize yourself, You're right? You didn't log in, and that's because we didn't provide our API key yet. So let's talk about how we would do that. <clears throat> All right, so we mentioned earlier that the authorization, right, had to be um, done using HTTP headers as opposed to just another variable on the URL, okay? So the way we do this in uh, using the request library is that instead of just passing a URL here, we are going to define uh, a variable. Let's call it options. Okay? This is going to be an object. And then inside that object, we're going to have an attribute called URL. So this is going to be the URL we're trying to open. And then followed by this, we're going to define the headers. So the headers are um, key value pairs that are part of the HTTP protocol. And authorization is one of those headers. There's a whole bunch of others. But here, the one we're interested in is a header called authorization. And we'll set the value of that header to process.env.api key. I guess 
doesn't need a semicolon here. <clears throat> All right. So remember this variable, right, is coming from this file where we store our secret password to access the API. And now that we have this, instead of providing just the URL here when we do our request, we're going to pass in our options variable, our options object. So instead of just saying open this link, now we've created a little bundle here that has a little bit more information. It has the link we want to open, but it also allows us to define specific HTTP headers we want to include with the query. And one of those headers that we need here, the, the header that we need for this API is the authorization header. This is just where we have to park our API key. So now if we hit refresh, um, we can see we're getting some data back. Okay, so we're getting page one <clears throat> per page 50, right? Um, and there looks to be something like an array because we get a square bracket and then we get a bunch of a uh, bunch of data that relates to the images, the search results that we are getting back with this little test um, test URL here. Okay. So that's great. Now we've set up, um, let's leave a comment here for our posterity. We said, um, <clears throat> okay, this uh, route will accept parameters from the Pexels photo search API. And let's put a link to that, so we remember that for later. All right. So now that we've set up this route on our server, that's going to act as a proxy between our P5 sketch and the API. Let's do a little bit of code on the P5 end, just to we can see that this works. And this is also going to allow us to talk about <clears throat> um, loading data. And then some important ideas around loading data in our sketches, especially as we start to get into uh, examples like this, where we're going to be loading, you know, let's say up to, you know, 50 images in the sketch. It's going to take a little bit of time to download these. And uh, so we'll talk about preload and when to use preload and when to not use it. Okay. But first, um, let's make sure our sketch can get this data back. <clears throat> All right. So um, we have a few options that we can make sure uh, we can use to load the data. Okay, so let's create a global variable here. I'm going to call it data. And because the data is in um, JSON format, okay, we're going to use the load JSON command instead of load strings. And the parameter to that is going to be um, basically this uh, the URL for our sketch. Okay? Because remember, we are calling our server. We're calling ourselves here. We're going to provide the route that we just created, which we called pixels, uh, pexels. Okay. Uh, and in fact, we're going to be a little bit smarter about this. Instead of doing that, we are going to create, um, let's call that, we're going to create a URL object, just like we did on the server side end of things. And that's going to allow us to uh, add some variables, some parameters to that URL a little bit more easily. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, remember, these are the different parameters we can pass on. So let's say we wanted to get a bunch of, uh, you know, square images that, you know, had a particular word in them. We are going to say query URL dot search params dot append. We'll say query. Let's look for images of sunflower. We'll do a few more examples afterwards. And uh, orientation square. Okay, so we can specify these parameters and then we're going to log the URL to make sure it looks good. Yep. And uh, let's hit reset. We don't want to have this URL anymore. We want to load our P5 sketch. Let's hit refresh and uh, open the console. Now this time I'm opening the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm opening the uh, the, the JavaScript console that's in the browser. Remember, not this is different from the Node.js Node uh, console. And I realize this gets a little confusing sometimes, but oh, this would be href. Okay. okay, so this is the link we're trying to open here. So that looks like reasonable to me. And um, let's see if it loaded some data. Now, if we want to play around with the object here, uh, we have to make sure that so we've defined data as a global variable. 
we have to make sure that we have selected the right frame. So this frame over here in our console. Okay, so once the console is active in this frame, we have access to our global variables. I have access now to this data variable, right? Which we can un unpack here. We can see we have one page of uh, results, page one, 15 images per page, because we did not ask for more than that. Uh, there are 23 total results that we could have access to if we wanted to. Um, and, uh, you know, they even give us the next page if we wanted to open this next page here. And then in, inside of this data, we have a element called photos. So photos is an array and it has 15 objects in it. And each object has the same structure. Okay, so if we unpack that, we can see, um, oh, cool, that gives you the average color in the picture. That's neat, I didn't notice that. Uh, so it gives you the average color for the picture, the dimensions for the original picture, right? Information about the photographer, if that image got a like or not. <clears throat> and then um, inside this SRC parameter, we have access to links, right? To ver different versions of the image, right? Different sizes. Um, a large version, a double large version, right? We can get the original if we wanted to. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. And then this is the URL to the uh, the actual web page that you can access on Pexels. So if we unpack this a little bit, right? We see we have our variable data. We have data.photos. That's the array that contains the 15 pictures we got. Data.photos bracket zero is the first image, right? This image has different sources, including things like large, right? <clears throat> so large, if I were to click on this, this is a link to an image that's hosted on pixels that has um, the following dimensions, right? How do I tell how big that image is? Uh, 650 by 650, I think. So this is simply a URL to an image. Uh, and because this is an image, we can actually load it using load image inside our sketch. Now, let's say this data file that came back was pretty big. Um, this is loading very quickly here. But if we immediately try to access the data array here, um, we might run into some issues uh, because the data may not be available already inside the variable. Sometimes it can take a few seconds before um, an HTTP request happens. So we may have an empty variable for a little while until this data is actually ready. So we saw there's like two different strategies we can use in P5 to uh, guard against that. One is we can do our data loading inside uh, pre a function called preload. Okay. So if we went into preload here, <clears throat> we can do our data loading that way. Okay. We can put the code into preload. So that's cool. Okay. So this would ensure that by the time we get to set up, the data that's inside um, this variable right, would actually be loaded. So preload is going to essentially wait until all the loading that's happening inside of it is completed. And then it's going to run setup. Okay. So for something small, like the this uh, just loading a bit of JSON, that's OK. It's not a big deal. We've done that before. But now the next thing we're about to do is we are going to go through the array that we received, and we are going to load all 15 images um, from the search results. Okay, We could increase that to more, up to 80 images. And that's going to take a little while. So we don't want to block our sketch from starting. Uh, we don't want to be stuck in preload for too long, because nothing will be happening. And the user might wonder if our website is just broken. Okay? <clears throat> so it works fine to preload small files. But if our next step here is to then start to load images, right? we want to do this um, in a slightly more asynchronous fashion so that we're not blocking things. Um, we can also load the JSON in an asynchronous way. So we're going to start by doing that. And uh, then we'll talk about how we can also load the images asynchronously and what that means for the structure of our sketch. Okay? So preload is good, but only if you have just a, just some a few small files you want to load, or maybe they're well defined. You know you're not going to be spending too much time in there. You can put things in preload, or if you're doing some testing and maybe you don't worry about it too much, that it's going to take a while before your uh, sketch starts. 
<clears throat> so in this example, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So instead of using preload here, I'm going to go back to setup. Um, and instead of putting the results of load JSON into this variable, we're going to we're going to define here what's called a callback, right? So the callback we're going to call it data loaded, and this is going to simply be a function that we define. So I just made up that name here on the fly. That function is going to have one parameter. It's going to be the value, the 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 JSON value we're getting back once it's loaded. And the first thing we'll do when that function runs is we're going to assign this value into our global variable called data. So now this is uh, asynchronous. It means that <clears throat> the uh, this is not going to this is only going to run when um, when the the data is actually available, right? When the, we got the query results back through load JSON, and we know for sure here that variable is populated, uh, which means setup is going to finish and jump into draw. And at some point, this is going to trigger. Okay. So once our data is loaded, you know we can put in a little log here so we know this happened. <clears throat> Let's hit refresh, and we can see this has run now. Data loaded, right? It means this code we're now over here in the code, and this has executed. All right. <clears throat> so at this point, let's go through um, all the photos that we've received, and we're going to go and load the images in the same fashion. So we saw that uh, that data, right? Data dot photos is an array. So we're going to iterate over that array, but just like we did in the Node.js example, we're going to use the uh, the sort of shortcut syntax that we learned about today when we're iterating with over arrays and we don't care about the index. So we're going to say for photo of photo uh, data dot photos. And that syntax is going to allow us to iterate over this array. So data.photos is this array over here. right? Uh, it's going to allow us to iterate over it. And every time we repeat, we'll have access to individual elements of the array as this variable called photo. Okay? So we can see that works. For instance, we could say uh, um, photo.log. Uh, oh, sorry, console.log photo.src. Um, let's call it just large. Okay. You can see here this for loop has simply logged all 15 of the URLs right, that we got from the data back. So we could use this information now to do some load image. Okay, So we could say load image, <clears throat> and uh, we could say photo.src large, for example. Or let's say large times two. Okay. I'm going to get the larger images. All right. Now, um, we need to put the results of load image somewhere. Okay. So we could say, let's imagine we're going to create an array here. Let's call this array uh, images. Right, and um, <clears throat> we could write the code like this, but remember, we're going to run into similar issues here with the the blocking and the loading. Right, loading fifteen images, it's going to take some time. So instead of putting the results straight into a variable, we're going to do the same as we did with load JSON. We're going to create a callback function, except instead of declaring a separate function. Um, we're going to just define the function right there in the load image, much like in the same way that when we're doing like a request here, we're defining the function that's going to run as a callback. Or over here, in when we define a get route, we're defining a function that runs as a callback. Okay. We're going to use the same syntax to define a function. And the parameter is going to be the image that was loaded. And that's going to allow us to run some code as soon as the image is ready. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, we could say images.push uh, image. So this is going to say load load this image and when it's ready, run this function. And the parameter is going to be the image that was just loaded. So here we simply take it and put it on top of our images array. 
All right, <clears throat> we're almost done for this uh, example. Let's then put some code into draw here. Uh, that's going to keep an eye on, well, first of all, let's take a look at images.length. Okay, this is the length of our array. So we should be able to see that, oh, this number is going up over time, right? It started at zero and then it went up as we've loaded more images and now we have 15. Okay. <clears throat> so let's uh, write some code here in, um, in draw that's simply gonna maybe just go through, let's go image mode, uh, center, uh, let's just go through the list and draw them so we can see the images that have come in. Okay. So we're going to say, or maybe we'll say um, image mode center. Let's draw the last one that has come in. Okay. So we'll say if images exist, um, then we will draw image and the last one is going to be images.lent minus one. And we'll draw that in the center of the window, yep. for example. Uh, if images.lent is greater than zero. So this is not an undefined, um, this was not an undefined variable and just didn't have anything in it. Did it just load really, really quickly? Let's also load, keep logging our image land to make sure we are getting those images. Okay, it just happens really, really fast, I think. It's kind of loading them rather quickly. All right, well, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> okay, instead we could say, um, okay, if we have images, maybe let's, um, let's create an index. We're gonna kind of scroll through them using our uh, mouse cursor here. And maybe I'm not gonna use large 2x, I'm just gonna use regular large because these are a little bit too big for my, <laughs> the amount of space I have available here. Uh, so let's map the mouse cursor. Uh, so this is gonna, mouse cursor goes between zero to width. Let's map it to a number between zero and images.length minus one. And let's put a floor on this to get rid of the decimal point. And then we are simply gonna use that as our index. And then let's refresh this. So when the images are fully loaded here, we can see I'm kind of scrolling through. So these are the 15 images we got back from our API search. Okay. And all of them technically, except for that one, I don't see the sunflowers in that one, but it doesn't matter. Most of them, um, they were probably tagged with, you know, sunflower or flower, and these are the search results we got back. Okay. All right, let me get rid of this console.log and um, we're gonna leave it at this for um, this first part of the video because it's starting to get long a little bit. Um, in the next video, now that we are able to load some images from Pexels, what we're going to do is play with this idea a little bit and uh, we're gonna take all the search results that we got and um, average them together to create this kind of blended image. And uh, we'll talk about some strategies to do that in the next video. See you there.